A cheer came from members of the Gambino crime family. Although the charges against him were obviously true, the jury had just said not guilty. John Gotti had become a symbol of the mob's invincibility. But who was John Gotti? He was, of course, a made man in the mafia, an infamous crime boss. But there was something more to him, something lethal. Born in 1940, Gotti was brought up in stifling poverty, one that he hated and would do anything to get out of. Turns out his brothers felt the same way, as five of them would go on to become made men in the mafia. Gotti and his family moved frequently before settling in an area known for its involvement with gangs. A very bad idea. By the age of 12, Gotti was working as an errand boy for an underground club in the neighborhood run by a captain of the Gambino family. Yep, the Gambino family. One of the five largest organized crime families of New York. Through his activities with the club, Gotti met Della Croce, who became his lifelong mentor and friend. Because of his cutthroat ambition, Gotti soon assumed a position in a gang called the Fulton Rockaway Boys, which was a group known for their robberies and carjackings. It might seem insignificant, but when he was 14, Gotti's toes were crushed by a cement mixer, one that he was trying to steal. Turns out, it was not so insignificant because due to that injury, he got a trademark gate. And due to his trademark gate, he became the target of vicious name-calling at his school. All this led to him becoming more and more furious with the world, and he soon dropped out at 16. By the age of 18, the police department already ranked Gotti as a low-level associate in the Gambino crew. Between 1957 and 1961, Gotti pursued a life of crime on a full-time basis. But these were petty arrests, street fighting, public intoxication, and car theft. The real charges would come later. But then a significant change came about. Gotti got a family. He even briefly tried his best at legitimate jobs for the sake of his family. First as a presser in a coat factory, and then as an assistant to a truck driver. Well, he left the apple pie life soon enough and was jailed twice by 1966. Now, he would aim to become the John Gotti. He carried out truck hijackings at Idlewild Airport. Two years later, United Airline employees managed to tell the FBI that Gotti was the man who signed a cargo for stolen objects. There was enough grounds to arrest him. While out on bail, Gotti got arrested again, this time for stealing a crazy amount of cigarettes worth $50,000. Believe it or not, these charges were dropped. Gotti was paroled in 1972 and returned to his old crew, which was still working under Fetigo. Gotti's parole had a condition, of course, no associating with known criminals. But Gotti said rules are made to be broken and associated with the hardest of criminals. A lot. A way to shake off poverty is to become a made man. And as you remember, Gotti hated poverty. There was only one tiny glitch. The membership books were closed. However, Fatico named Gotti the acting capo of the Bergen crew soon after Gotti was paroled. In his new role, he often had to visit Della Croce, his mentor. Of course, Della Croce already liked him, but the two men became fast friends in this new arrangement. Both of them were like twins. Violent streaks, cursing, and heavy gambling being their common points. In 1973, after the famous kidnapping and murder of a member of the Gambino family, Emmanuel Gambino, Gotti was assigned to a large and heavily armed hit squad that was to track down and kill everyone involved. Usually the Sicilian Mafia doesn't really play by any rules and goes after families of their enemies. In New York, rules are a little different. If someone crosses you, you can't go after their family. Well, the head of the Gambino family said, leave that jazz, and ordered a hit on the entire family of the killer, McBratney. On May 23rd, this huge mission started. Three leaders walked in, Gotti, Gallion, and Ruggiero. The entire hit squad was dressed as police detectives, and their original plan was to take McBratney to the parking lot and shoot him there, out of the sight of onlookers. Well, things did not go according to plan. Despite the fact that Gallion had aimed a gun at him, and Ruggiero was holding a pair of handcuffs. McBratney realized they weren't real cops and asked, let's see a badge. Gallione figured he might as well shoot him to the ceiling since their cover was blown. Although McBratney was stronger, he was out against two men, Gotti and Ruggiero. McBratney dragged the two men down to the door, but Gallione shot McBratney dead when his accomplices came to fight. Clearly, Gallione had saved Gotti. And what did Gotti do? Pledge his life to him? Give him a cookie at least? Oh no, he actually got annoyed that Gallione had killed McBratney as Gotti wanted to kill him and become a made man. He felt as if Gallione purposely robbed him of his chance. 
When gangsters become annoyed, they don't just throw a hissy fit and listen to angry rock albums. They kill. Just a few months later, Gellion was found dead. It was obvious who had killed him. The Teflon boss. The rise of John Gotti had begun. Please comment below if you think Gotti was wrong to kill Gellion.